In the early 1970s, when my late father studied at a Jesuit university in Seattle, Washington, he encountered priests who taught him, he once told me, situation ethics. For those who don't know, situation ethics was a term of art popularized by a Protestant moral theologian named Joseph Fletcher, whose 1966 book, Situation Ethics, was hotly debated in America on television programs and in universities and in seminaries. It proposed a new ethic of loving concern, but which was little more than utilitarianism. It proposed, um, Fletcher uh, proposed that if the end of an action is love, that justifies any means to arrive at that loving end. Love is love, which is to say love as the end of any action can justify lying, premarital sex, adultery, masturbation, sodomy, prostitution, theft, murder, abortion. I'm just reading the things that come through in the book. No act is intrinsically evil, but every act is good or evil depending on the situation and the purpose of the act. If you understand an act is ordered to the end of loving concern, then this justifies the means to that end. If you really love grandma, and I know you do, and you want her to feel no pain in the declining years out of loving concern for her, this loving concern justifies euthanasia. The Nazis, of course, were not motivated by loving concern, and so their euthanasia acts were immoral. But if the situation was different, so could the morality of the act be different. If the end is love, then the end justifies the means. Whether the Jesuit priest taught my dad's situation ethics to immunize him against such ideas or not, I do not know. I wasn't in the classroom. Um, I was just a glimmer in his eye. I suspect that my father walked away from the course with this concept of situation ethics because the priest was teaching proportionalism. But situation ethics was a phrase more easily grasped by a 20-something-year-old to say something more simply. Whatever my father learned in that class, it was his view that the Catholic Church after the Council was updating how it taught moral theology. He did not know what to think about this, my father. It was neither abhorrent nor attractive to him. I think it puzzled him all his life. He would sometimes raise it cryptically if I raised the topic of mass attendance. He was a daily mass goer as a child and rarely went to mass after college. He still professed a love for God. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I suspect he raised the anecdote cryptically as a kind of justification for diminished participation in the church. This was not the fault of, a, of the moral relativism, relativism of situation ethics or his professor's proportionalism. It was his own deliberate fault for not going to Mass. But his sense of upheaval and change in church teaching unquestionably weakened his attachments to the church. In defense of his teachers, I do not believe they recommended situational ethics. Many post-conciliar Catholic moral theologians newly equipped with the slogan of openness to the world uh, advanced a Catholic alternative to situational ethics, which was relatively better, more rooted in older traditions of casuistry, applying the natural law to cases, not situations. It called, uh, it was an impressive display, this proportionalism of intellectual pr prowess, marshalling resources from the past, the Stoics, Maximus, Aquinas, to serve as a compromise between moral realism, which sees acts as intrinsically right or wrong, and the antinomian relativistic account, which one sees in Fletcher's situational ethic of loving concern. <clears throat> 